everybody, welcome back to the Rivers Experience. So today, we're gonna to be working on a mini forge. Now, I just want y'all to take a second and actually listen to what I'm about to say. Don't skip ahead or do anything like that just yet. I'm gonna talk for about a minute, minute and a half, but it is gonna help y'all out. So, I am gonna show y'all my errors, mistakes, kind of, I wouldn't really call them bloopers or anything like that. I am gonna show y'all that process because it helped me get to the actual mini forge that I have in the end. Now, I'm just gonna tell y'all, if you're gonna do a plaster of Paris mixed mini forge with a paint can, just be wary of doing that. A lot of people do these. They do the paint can with the little bolt feet and the plaster of Paris mix in it. You know, if it works out for you, awesome, but Plaster of Paris Mix has about a five minute set time. Now, that means from the time you pour water into it to the time that it's basically a brick is at most five minutes. By four minutes, it starts getting really hard. Five minutes, it's basically a brick. So you have that long to pour water in it, mix it, and get it into what you would need it to be get, or into and set in that area. That means packing it down, getting air bubbles out, all of that. You got that much time. I didn't know that because a lot of people who do the mini forge videos don't tell you how much time you have before it actually sets up. So I'm just letting y'all know, if y'all are gonna go that route, you gotta hustle. Now, what I ended up doing is primarily something that you can make with an ammo can, which is what I did, 50 cal ammo can, fire brick, torch. That's it. If you want to go that route, watch my video. I am, like I said, I'm going to or show you all the actual, what would be outtakes or the mistakes, all those things real quick in a time lapse video so you can see what I did and everything. But yeah, it's a little, it's a little nutty. It's a little crazy. Uh, I had to do it and then basically dismantle it. So. In the end, it turned out to be a great forge and it works like a son of a gun. But if this ends up helping y'all out, make sure to let me know, go down to the comment section. I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all the bloopers and then we're gonna get into the actual forge itself. And I am gonna show you it able to heat up a piece of steel to cherry red. So I'm not just gonna leave that at the end of the video where you don't get to see some metal turn red. You will see that at the end of this video. Watch the whole thing if you get a chance. Let's get after it.
see, and then we have we have areas like we have areas like this right here. This is why you know this stuff ends up felling real easily because you try and get it packed down, but you end up with all of these little gaps and open areas right here. This wall would have cracked real easily right there. So yeah. I was gonna try and keep some of the side pieces and just end up trying to do a brick on the top. Nope, all, all, all of these side pieces have gotta go here, so yeah. We'll go ahead and uh, <laughs> keep removing stuff. So what my plan is here, I'm going to take one of these fire bricks, I had already got two of them, so I am going to have to get some more, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and saw this thing straight in half right here, and then I'm actually going to saw it in half here. now is get these fire bricks cut down to fit in the top of the mini forge and then we're gonna get the hole cut through the bricks that are on the side for the actual torch to fit through and we're gonna try and heat something up so let's go ahead get onto that I'm gonna do the hole do the bricks on the top and then you know show you all the difference between the two torches let's go ahead and do that and all I'm using here is just a back cut saw this is a cheap one from Harbor Freight, so I'm not that worried about messing it up. But it cuts through this pretty well. Go ahead and go straight edge notch out this a little bit because there's a rim inside here where that gasket used to sit so I'm having to make sure that these actually fit into that now
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get the hole drilled through the actual fire brick here that covers the side of this. Now, I am, like I said, gonna try and get it to go back at an angle just a little bit, but I've only got so much fire brick to drill through, so, I mean, it's not gonna be an exact science, it's just gonna be me trying to get it straight at an angle. Yeah, straight at an angle. That makes sense, we're gonna do that. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and break this apart so you can actually see the different pieces. And then I'm gonna show you the new torch setup and then we're gonna try and heat up some metal. So let's go ahead and do that, see how it goes. All right, so this is it fully dismantled. I'm gonna show you the pieces as I put them back in. So we have the bottom brick that's down here, which is my base plate. Then we have the plaster Paris mix that goes down either side of this, about a half an inch by the depth of the actual brick. Then we have the plaster Paris mix that's in the back here. Now if you remember, I originally did it to where I had that, uh, that tubing in here that created the chamber and then I had all the plaster Paris mix around it. Now what I found out about that is actually you have a ton of air pockets inside that and that's what's going to cause it to crack real easily. I didn't like the way that was and on top of that, I mean having four or five minutes from the time you put water in it to the time it sets up is ridiculous. If I could advise anybody to stay away from that, I would. Now we got like I said, base plate brick, plaster Paris mix around it. We got our side piece which is a cut down piece of brick. You've got your other side piece, which actually has the hole cut in it for the torch. You've got your back piece. Top brick. And this is actually rounded so that it can fit the rounded corners that are on the front of this. Back brick. And it is a snug fit. I wanted it to be that way. So I did, like I said, I did cut this out so that this channel here would actually end up fitting inside there. There's a little lip that creates a channel for the seal that I took out. So needed to trim this down so that it didn't smash the brick whenever I had that. Basically what I created here, this is a chamber that is all fire brick. The heat actually doesn't touch the plaster Paris mix at all. It's all going to be insulated by this chamber. So what I ended up doing was basically making a mini forge. Not so much the paint can setup that everyone uses like this with the little feet poking out of it that are like bolts and stuff like that. This thing doesn't need those feet because the bottom is flat. So it is literally a mini forge. Now it is still going to be using a torch as opposed to the big jets on the top which would make it an actual forge but all in all this thing is an actual fire brick forge. So super happy with how that turned out. So yeah, it's pretty simple, but let's go ahead and show you the torch setup I'm talking about. And I'll show you why I picked it. I mean, you see the difference there?
quite a bit <laughs> of, a, of a difference. Like I said, this is the Benzomatic TS8000. Not sponsored by them, not affiliated with them at all, but yeah. Let's go ahead, put it in here, get some metal in here, see if I can get it hot enough to, you know, heat treat something. So let's try that real quick. All right, let's get it lit up. And you can see here, it is creating a vortex inside there, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to swirl around and like I said, create that vortex. You can see how hot, how hot it's getting over here on this side. All right, let's go ahead and get some metal put inside there. This is just a piece of uh, this mild steel, but we'll see how it turns out, see if it does get, you know, nice cherry red. Let's see if this is a better setup than what I was gonna be doing. And while that's doing that, I am gonna show you how I got this set up. It's just on this little piece right here. And then the tank is all the way down here on the ground, away from it. So this is about uh, this is a one inch by eight inch piece by about six inches long. And uh, we'll just go ahead and let it do its thing. See how it goes. there this is at <laughs> about four minutes <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely amazing oh my goodness <laughs> I mean, I was expecting it to, I was expecting it to kind of work, but I was not expecting it to work that well. <laughs> Man, that's cool. y'all again <laughs> we'll let that let that cool down in there all right so this definitely turned out amazing it works like a son of a gun the metal heated up in about three minutes which was awesome I've had to use that blue torch to heat up tangs to be able to soften it a little bit so that I can use a drill press and drill through them like for the files and things like that. If you don't let that stuff get it heated up and soften it, you can't drill through a file with that drill press. I mean, you'll just go through tons of bits, even if you're using cobalt bits and things like that. Not cobalt the brand, but cobalt the, the tip. So what I wanted y'all to get from this is sometimes you can plan something and when it doesn't work, you'll just keep at it until 
you know, you're just blue in the face. Don't do that. Learn to adapt, learn to change up your plans so that you're not just wasting your time. You don't want to do that. This, again, just some fire brick, ammo can, torch setup. About a hundred bucks. Now, the hundred bucks doesn't include like my angle grinder or my drill or anything like that. It's primarily just the pieces here. You, and it doesn't include the, the extension hose for the actual torch itself. That was about $11.90. I'm not including that because you don't need it. It's just something I decided to do. Now, this, if I would have just kept going with the Plaster Paris mix and trying to make that work, I would not have actually realized that there was air pockets inside it and it would have cracked out and it would have been horrible. Luckily, I decided don't do that, do something else, order the other fire brick, and make it work. Now, this turned into basically a mini actual forge with the fire brick and all that, but I want y'all to know that y'all can do this. The only thing I did was sawed some fire brick, drilled a hole in it, cut a hole in this, put it all in there. You wouldn't even need to actually do the plaster of Paris mix to fill it all in. You could just use all of the excess fire brick material. I've got so much excess fire brick material that I could have used this stuff to fill in all those gaps and I wouldn't have needed any of the plaster of Paris mix because really you just need to be able to fill in the gaps around the bottom brick. That's it. The rest of it will fit tight enough by itself. So you could have bought four fire bricks, an ammo can, and a torch and had this outcome if you just kind of follow how I did this. Now, hopefully this helps some of y'all out and gives y'all another option whenever you're actually making a mini forge as opposed to the paint can or, you know, the people with the propane tanks and all that stuff. Try this out. If it works, awesome. This doesn't require feet to be on the bottom of it like can does. You sit it up just like this. So hopefully this helped y'all out. If it did, you know, hit the little like button somewhere around here. Uh, if you think about it, hit the subscribe button. It's down there in the corner. And if you would, if this helped you out, or you learned anything from this, or you have any input on what I could do to make this a little bit better, leave it in the comment section. I always read those and I respond to them 100% of the time. So yep, with that being said, this, is, this one's over, and uh, I'll catch y'all next time, all right? Y'all keep building, and have a great day.